Alright guys, today we're going to be mixing up and doing a spicy take, as you guys can see here. The gun is clear, as I double checked it, but this is the Springfield Prodigy. It is wearing a Hollow Sun 407K X2, so the newer variant of the 407, and this is officially going to be, for at least a while, my wilderness handgun in bear country. And today we're going to be explaining why that is, and giving some preface as to why I think that this is a decent handgun, and talking about, or a decent handgun for that application, talking about the ultimate kind of end point for wilderness defense against bears and other wild animals, and really talking talking about that explanation because there's a lot of, I think, misconceptions to this um, just overall situation and, you know, kind of what is the ultimate bear handgun or bear gun as a whole. And I don't think that the 9mm is necessarily the ultimate bear gun, but I think that this gun helps really kind of put to a point what the end goal exactly is with bear defense. So, like I was saying, this is the gun, and today we're gonna be talking about it. So, of course, as of what I do with most of my bear guns, I do have a Gunfighters Inc. Um, holster for this gun, which is not sponsored by them. I paid for this thing of my own accord, and this is just how it is, but it's pretty cool. It's set up just like my Desert Eagles was with the blood red Kydex on the back, and then a tan straps, tan front, and so overall just set up just like that old um, Desert Eagle was. And I've gone back and forth with Wilderness um, handguns for bear defense many a time, and I have somehow ended with a nine millimeter, at least for now. I might end up changing my mind, and I still do have a 44 mag revolver. And I think that a 44 mag revolver does make a lot of sense as well. But I think that a lot of people, when they think about wilderness um, defense, whether it's from bears or other wild animals, they tend to, I think, really overthink the amount of ammunition or the amount of stopping power that they actually need. And at least in regards to what does it mean to truly end a fight? Now, regardless to whether we're talking about two-legged, four-legged animals attacking people, the ultimate way to end a fight with a gun especially is to do it in two of or one of two ways, and that is creating enough hydrostatic shock within the target um, that you literally jamble or, you know, create basically a mush of their internal organs so that those internal organs no longer function, or of course you poke enough holes into those internal organs, primarily the lungs, the heart, or the brain, and cause those organs to no longer function the way they should. And in both of these regards, there's a degree of accuracy that is needed. I think even in my prior conversations about bear guns and bear defense, um, and this can go for any wild animal, um, largely speaking, um, there are some kind of exceptions like elephants and stuff that have particularly thick, particularly hard hides, particularly thick, particularly hard bones. Um, so they kind of defy these typical rules. But by and large, when it comes down to choosing a um, firearm for wilderness defense, there's no bypass passing the end goal, and that is, once again, to basically disrupt and destroy critical organs. Once again, the heart, the lungs, the brain. Those are the three critical organs that if a creature doesn't have or if those are not functioning properly, that creature is not long for the world. Now, once again, you could destroy their liver, you could destroy their intestines, you could destroy different parts of their body, you know, you could blow up their mouth. Um, all of those things, unfortunately, are not really going to do a lot of quick damage. Like those will, in the end, kill an animal if you destroy those things. However, that they're not going to kill an animal within minutes or seconds, right? If you destroy the spinal cord of an animal that physically renders them inoperable, they they can't move. You've essentially unplugged the light switch, so to speak. So when it comes down to it, the same rules apply with firearms and you know when you're trying to stop a wild animal from charging you. So what this ultimately kind of means or what I'm trying to get at is that you need a good deal of accuracy. Whatever firearm and caliber you can fire accurately is going to be honestly your best bet for wilderness self-defense because when it comes down to it if an animal is trying to charge you or attack you in any form of way the best way to stop that attack is to cut off those 
those different mechanisms, those shut those different organs down. And how you do that isn't just by randomly shooting an animal or pelting it with a certain amount of bullets, but it's about getting bullets into the heart into the lungs, into the brain, into the spine. If you can manage to hit those areas, if you manage to strike those key points, then you're going to be able to effectively stop that animal from attacking you. And this is where the nine mil comes into the light. And the reason why I say that the nine mil comes into the light is because while the nine mil does not carry a particularly high amount of kinetic energy, I think in previous thoughts and previous mind processes, I typically would say, and I still don't fully negate this, um, philosophy, but the key isn't solely having a lot of kinetic energy. It's not solely hitting an animal with as much shock as possible. I mean, that certainly can be effective, but remember that once again, if you shoot an animal and destroy their arm, they still can bite you. They can still use their other arm to damage you. Once again, it's not so much about causing a certain degree of physical damage. Once again, this isn't like a video game where damage is additive. Um, you're not necessarily shooting their arm and damaging them so much here to then shoot them in the other arm and damage them so much there and then they die. It's literally about getting bullets into their vital organs to shut those vital organs down. And so this is why the nine mil actually becomes an effective wilderness defense Gun because with certain loads, as we'll discuss here in a little bit, you can actually achieve a good deal of penetration and penetration into those vital organs. So once again, a bullet that can penetrate two and a half feet in ballistic gelatin is certainly going to penetrate deep enough into a bear and hit those vital organs. So when it comes down to a nine mil for bear defense, I don't necessarily think that this is the end all to beat all. I don't think that this gun is necessarily the greatest choice of all, but I do think it is actually a very realistic choice because with proper, properly loaded ammunition, you can send bullets deep enough into a bear or into other wild animals that it is going to reach the heart, reach the lungs, reach the spinal cord and or brain and sever those connections. And if you do that, regardless to whether it's a nine mil, 10 mil, 44, um, whatever, you know, insert caliber here, you are going to effectively stop the fight. And this is something that I think is very confirmed through a lot more of the research that I've done because I've heard of situations where people have, you know, unloaded six rounds of 44 mag onto a bear and it didn't stop the bear, right? The bear still successfully attacked them. I've also legitimately, there are reported documentations of this very bullet right here, this nine mil outdoorsman by um, Buffalo Boar killing grizzly bears. So when it comes down to it, the end is that you can use a 44 Magnum you can use a 460 Ruger, you can use a 454 Casul, you can use a 500 Smith & Wesson, you can use a 12 gauge, but if your accuracy is not, um, if it leaves something to be desired or it's not good, then ultimately your rounds will be wasted. Obviously, if you miss the target, you're going to be doing no damage, you're going to be absolutely doing nothing to that bear, and moreover, if you're not getting hits into critical areas, you're not going to be doing anything. So, like I said, where the 9 mil makes an actual, you know, case for itself, a redeeming case for being a bear gun, is that if you can set it up and you find a platform, whether that's something like my Prodigy or a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, Glock 34, whatever, if you find a platform that you can shoot accurately, reliably, and reasonably quickly, then you actually have a very good chance of using something like a 9 mil, like a 10 mil, like a 44, to effectively stop the threat. And this is where I think, once again, a lot of the misconceptions come from, because invariably in my comment sections of any bear defense video I've done, there's always the people that are like, well, you need a 12 gauge slug gun, or you need a 375 H&H, &H. and these are valiant options. But once again, even a 12 gauge slug gun, if you are putting rounds into the intestines, if you're putting rounds, you know, off off kilter, you're not actually going to be stopping the threat. And moreover, once again, as I did more research, I've actually found that this is the 
the greatest truth to the reality of stopping um, attacking animals isn't so much having a large caliber or doing a particular amount of kinetic energy damage, but rather sending a bullet precisely into a part, particularly an organ, that is going to render that animal dead or dying very quickly. Now, another thing that's worth noting is that animals are not... Um, like static targets, they're not like cardboard. There are more than just accuracy factors there. Of course, animals also have things like adrenaline or epinephrine running through their body, just as we humans have the same thing running through our body. And epinephrine and um, or and or adrenaline is however you want to call it does very weird things to humans and to animals. And so just because you are able to sever connections like lungs, like the heart, like the um, spinal cord, though particularly the spinal cord and the brain are kind of end game things if you sever those, but if you do sever or you know perforate or greatly damage things like the lungs and the heart, it is not necessarily a guarantee for a kill. Now it will kill the animal at some point, but that may be you know, 10, 15 minutes. And that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but an animal, an aggressive animal can do a lot in 10 minutes. So do be warned that, you know, there's no perfect solution. Once again, there's been people that have shot bears with 12 gauges and it hasn't effectively killed them. Um, you know, they, they've they shot them with 44s, hasn't effectively killed the animal. And part of this has to do, one, with accuracy, and the other part of it has to do with that invariable factor of things like epinephrine running through that animal that causes that animal to do things that are superhuman or super whatever you want to call it, like animals going beyond what you would expect. And so there is a level of luck or serendipity there where you can shoot them with a 500 Smith & Wesson unless you're truthfully shooting that animal with a large bore cannon that's going to put a you know 12 inch hole through that animal. There's no guarantees that even a 12 gauge or 375 H&H is actually going to work. And so this is the kind of uncomfortable truth to a lot of um, bear defense situations is there's no clear cookie cutter situation that is absolutely clear. And so ultimately at the end of the day, the advice that has floated in the comments before is something that I think is most worth repeating. And that is that <clears throat> train and carry the largest caliber that you feel comfortable with, but also that you can accurately shoot and accurately shoot quickly. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that nine mil is the largest caliber I can accurately shoot quickly. I can definitely shoot 44 very quickly. And um, there are a number of reasons why, like I said, I honestly don't mind carrying something like this Prodigy because having the ability to have 20 rounds of hard cast lead 147 grain bullets is is a really great thing and I think that uh, it definitely is worthy of being carried and I honestly feel very comfortable and confident with it primarily in black bear territory now if I was going to places like Katmai National Park or if I was going to places where there was a very high presence of brown bears I would definitely want to step up once again to something like a 44 Magnum but in places especially where there's just black bears wolves coyotes and the smaller side of predatory animals, I feel 100% confident that this 9 mil could absolutely stop those uh, threats, um, should they become threats. So for me, in my opinion, I don't think that the 9 mil is necessarily the end all to beat all. And ironically, I want to say about two or three years ago, I did a video saying that no, 9 mil is not a bear caliber. I was definitely wrong in that um, assessment. And like I said, this is a topic that I think a lot of and very frequently of because it is something that is very pressing, um, something that's very real, something that I deal with quite frequently, especially where I live nowadays. It is not uncommon um, to see black bears on a very frequent basis. So having something that can be carried very easily and have very accessible it but also stop a black bear is what's most valuable to me and I think that that's where 
I really come back to liking and enjoying something like this Springfield Prodigy is that with nine mils, they're very easy to carry. They're very easy to have on you. So say you want to go, you know, downhill mountain biking, or say you want to do some type of activity like rock climbing. Um, it's very easy to have something like a nine mil either on your person or very close to your person so that if you are doing those different activities, you have something that has adequate protection for your situation. So there's no cut, there's no cut and dry, clear, concise, you know, this is the way. But do understand when it comes to wilderness animal protection, whether it's bears, whether it's um, cougars or mountain lions, whether it's anything like that, do understand that the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is train, train, train. Because the end the end analysis for me, what I saw in every situation of, you know, effective use and effective stopping of a wilderness animal, whether or a grizzly bear or black bear or any type of large or dangerous game animal was accuracy. Every single time that I saw a successful animal repelled slash killed, it was always because the person shooting that animal got those shots where they needed to be. And so for me, whether you decide to carry a nine mil, 10 mil, 44, 4, 40 Smith & Wesson, 460 Ruger, 454 Casul, regardless, make sure that whatever you're carrying, you can be accurate with, that you can hit your target, and that most importantly, you can deliver those rounds to where they need to be. And so part of that does have to do also with ammo. You do want to be considered if you are carrying a nine mil for wilderness self-defense, that you want to make sure that you have something like a buffalo bore hard cast lead bullet, because this guy is specifically rated for two and a half feet of penetration in ballistic gelatin. So these are designed to penetrate deep, and that is what you are going to want. You don't want just a standard FMJ NATO load. You're going to want something that is specifically tailored to wilderness self-defense. And that doesn't just go for 9 mil. That goes for 44 mag. That goes for 10 mil. That goes for 460 Ruger, 454 Casul. There's a lot of loadings for all of those calibers and hollow points, and you do absolutely not want to run a hollow point at all. Do not run them put them to the side, and unless you are hunting, then maybe consider it, but if you're going for true self-protection and you're going to be using that firearm in the capacity of self-protection for wilderness self-defense, you are absolutely going to want hard cast lead bullets or full copper bullets that are designed to cut and penetrate. You want maximum penetration because when it comes down to handgun loadings especially, the most important thing with a handgun is not kinetic energy transfer, but it is that primarily, it's primarily going to be um, getting those projectiles into critical spots to end the fight. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.